What is going on, guys? Thank you so very much for stopping by the channel today. I got a little bit of extra for you. It is July 3rd, 2021. Happy 4th of July weekend. You guys are getting a little bit of extra this weekend and not a full-fledged podcast. Because let's be real, guys. Everybody's going to be doing their own thing for 4th of July. There's not really much WWE news to go around to begin with. So I figured instead of giving you guys nothing, let's do a couple of extras this weekend and call it a week. And then we'll pick it back up next week and do the full thing again when the holiday is over. But I got stuff to go over today. Some juicy stuff, some news about Zelina Vega and more NXT burials set for the main roster potentially. Follow me on social media at JD from NY206. That's Twitter and Instagram. Hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on the bell for all notifications. And if you guys missed any of the content on the channel this week, Monday Night Raw, AEW Dynamite on Wednesday, and Friday Night SmackDown last night, where we seen the return of Zelina Vega, make sure you guys go to the homepage and check all that stuff out. It is on the channel right now. Another couple of NXT stars potentially heading to the main roster, set for a burial by Bruce Pritchard. Really, not really, but you guys know how that works with NXT. So there were more tryout matches before SmackDown last night at the WWE Thunderdome. PW Insider is reporting that Tony Storm and Shotzi Blackheart are the latest top NXT stars to get a tryout, and that probably means that they are also being considered for a move to Raw or SmackDown. PW Insider reports the following matches scheduled for SmackDown took place. Shotzi Blackheart versus Tony Storm, Odyssey Jones versus Bobby Roode, and Karrion Cross once again getting a tryout in front of main roster officials versus Cesaro. Now, Karrion Cross has been working dark matches for weeks, and it's expected that he will be heading to the main roster within the next couple of months. Bronson Reed already lost the NXT North American Championship to Isaiah Swerve Scott on this past Tuesday's episode of NXT. Will that be happening to Karrion Cross? It is believed that he will be defending that NXT Championship against Johnny Gargano at the Great American Bash or somewhere soon thereafter. Now, personally, I don't see Johnny Gargano being a legit enough guy, though we all love him. One of my favorite acts in all of WWE. I don't look at Johnny Gargano as the type of guy to take down Karrion Cross and win the NXT Championship from him. I just don't think it's believable. I would rather them come up with something a little bit more creative and do something a little bit more in the line of Karrion Cross, whether they strip him of the title because he does something to disobey Anything from Samoa Joe or William Regal. Maybe they have him vacate the title or something along those lines. There's got to be something that they can come up with instead of having Johnny Gargano beat him and he's got a loss on his record going to the main roster, even though it really doesn't matter. You might as well get it out of the way in some sense because as soon as Vince and Bruce realize that he is undefeated, the first thing that they'll probably plan is who is going to take him down and how quickly. So it's probably best if they actually do beat him in some sense, but I don't think it's necessarily a thing where you have to bring him up to the main roster. You got to beat him. You got to take the title off of him. There are ways to go about it. That's why you are a creative writer. So I'm not happy about these moves. I'm not. I'm not happy about the Bronson Reed move at all. I thought it was way too soon. I think Bronson Reed is still maturing into the type of performer he's going to be. I don't necessarily I don't necessarily think that it's wrong for Isaiah Swerve Scott to get the championship because I was advocating for him to be one of the heels to potentially take the title off of Bronson Reed, whether it was Santos Escobar, Isaiah Swerve Scott, Pete Dunne. He had a great series of opponents lined up for him as a babyface North American champion and in one swoop instantly on a random episode of NXT in an unadvertised match they took the belt off of him and he did not even get his feet wet at all he was in the middle of a feud with Santos Escobar 
Now, what happens to those plans and what happens to Santos Escobar? Things just get changed because Daddy Vince wants something. And I find it funny how he wants Bronson Reed when he has somebody or had somebody on the main roster like a Keith Lee who is built very similar to a Bronson Reed. He's already got somebody similar to Bronson Reed in Otis. So I don't really think Bronson Reed's going to fare well on the main roster at all just based on WWE's history on how they book and how they handle guys that look like Bronson Reed. It's just ridiculous to me. It is not fundamentally sound for you to pull somebody out of NXT when we all know that they are still needed down there, that they're just getting started just to put him on the main roster and do what? Six months from now, mark it on your calendars. Six months from now, I guarantee to you, I'll be saying this guy's going to be begging to go back to NXT. I'm going to ask you guys a very simple question. Give him a six-month grade. Grade him after six months. Is he better or worse on the main roster? More than likely, we know what's happening there. Now, the women's division needs help. Shotzi could be a shot in the arm legitimately. Tony Storm, she's more than ready for the main roster. But again, is WWE booking main roster women's wrestling as a priority right now? Everybody but Charlotte seems to be irrelevant on this show. Bayley and Bianca, SmackDown needs help. There's nobody at the top outside of Sasha Banks and those two. WWE hasn't done anything to build any new stars. They let go of several women that I thought could have actually benefited or they could have benefited the company by using them. I don't really get where WWE sits with women's wrestling right now. So I doubt Shotzi and Tony Storm are gonna be utilized in the way that we all think that they should be utilized. But they're just gonna be two names that WWE, Bruce and Vince plucked from NXT that are gonna be placed on one of these shows or both of these shows. And they're not gonna do much of anything. When we all know Tony Storm can easily lead a division by herself. I said it, look at Ruby Riot. Where, where did she end up? Fired. Look at Rhea Ripley. Look at Tony, uh, look at uh, Shotzi Blackheart, rather. They all are cut from the same cloth. They all have similar looks. Seriously, if they didn't push Ruby Riot for whatever reason, I'm assuming it was based on her looks, because all I read was that she was universally loved backstage, what do you think is going to be waiting Shotzi Blackheart on the main roster? You think they're going to take to her because she is cool and younger and different and the new girl on the block? Why didn't they push Ruby Riot if that was the case? What's the difference between the two? People don't think. I am not excited about any potential that these women could add to the main roster because we know what awaits them. Out of 10 people you could call up from NXT, you'd be lucky if one succeeds on the main roster. They do it for game. They pull and then they bury. They don't give a fuck what Triple H has done in NXT. We all know this by now. Triple H creates Vince Kills. It's almost as if they do it on purpose because Triple H, I'm not saying he handles everybody great, but the majority of the, of the men and women that come out of NXT, they are ready when they leave NXT. But WWE main roster feels the need to change for the sake of changing because they didn't come up with it. If they succeed, then it all goes to Triple H. And if they fail, then they have something to blame him on. What are you doing down there? Look at NXT. It's nothing but a, a blood-sucking money machine, right? How much money are they pumping into NXT? It's not really a uh, financial benefit for WWE. It's operating at a loss. That's why they do it. On one hand, it doesn't make any sense coming out of my mouth, but that's what they do. They don't give a shit. They're sitting on a fucking mountain of money. They don't care. They rather have the fucking ego than anything else. If their ego is bruised, forget about it, man. And that's what happens. Vince and Bruce look at Triple H. All these men and women are ready to come out of NXT. Then why would NXT exist? Why does it need to exist? He's getting them ready for Bruce and Vince. But if they succeed the way that they are coming out of NXT, it's not going to sit well with Bruce and Vince because they had nothing to do with it. They don't go down to the Performance Center outside of this week. So they feel to change everything is a necessity. They need to change every aspect of what Triple H does, and then they make it their own. So if it succeeds, he gets no credit. If it fails, he gets the blame. 
That's the way it is, folks. Don't even argue with me. I'm not excited about these potential call-ups at all. Will it make the draft a little bit more unpredictable? Who the fuck knows? WWE hasn't really given a shit about the draft in years. Maybe this year it will be different, says the geeks on social media. I doubt it. I'm not excited about any potential call-ups, especially after we've seen Karrion Cross already stripped of everything that made him unique on main event in that one match with Shelton Benjamin that WWE tried to bury in the algorithm. Copywriting striking everybody because they posted it on their Twitter page. They know. We know. Get ready for a complete disappointment with all these NXT call-ups. Corey Graves. He worries fans over a cryptic tweet coming out of SmackDown. Corey Graves obviously is the Monday Night Raw, really, if you want to think about it, the play-by-play guy. He's just there to aid Mr. Jimmy Smith as he gets acclimated with the position. But he doesn't seem to be on track as far as what his purpose is in life. He put out a tweet last night and fans went crazy over it because it was done in a very cryptic manner. He says, and I quote, I was put on this earth to do something. What I'm doing now is not it, end quote. Now, tons of fans flooded Corey Graves' mentions on Twitter to speculate what he meant. A lot of them took the time to praise his work on WWE commentary as well. This sparked concern within the community that he might have just hinted that he wants to pursue another career option. We don't know what was going on last night. Maybe he was drinking and maybe he had a little bit of that, a little bit of that truth serum and he was sitting around contemplating life and maybe he feels like he's better off doing something else. Maybe he realizes how shitty Monday Night Raw really has become and he doesn't want to be a part of it, man. I would not be shocked if that's the case. He got moved from the much cooler brand, SmackDown, the better of the two, but not by much brand in SmackDown to be placed on Monday Night Raw to be on a much worse show and to anchor that commentary booth because WWE can't figure out who the fuck they want in that play-by-play position. Or maybe he was just doing something with Carmella and he was referencing something that, uh, and it has nothing to do with his position on Monday Night Raw. Maybe they were doing a a little bit something in the bedroom that he didn't really uh, like. I don't know. I don't know what it would be, what it could be, but Corey Graves... It's probably outside of Pat McAfee, one of the brightest spots on what I think is a dismal WWE programming week. I think he adds a lot to Monday Night Raw, especially with the revolving door of commentators. Who knows what he is thinking here? He tends to do this from time to time. I would not take it serious at all, but fans were in an uproar and worried about the well-being of Corey Graves following SmackDown last night. Speaking of Monday Night Raw, WWE made a change to a Monday Night Raw match happening this coming Monday. MVP is returning to in-ring action. So they broke up the Hurt Business to put MVP back in the ring when he is much more suited to be a mouthpiece for WWE Champion Bobby Lashley. This is how WWE fills their television, and this is why the shows really drag every single week. Now, during a commercial that aired on Friday Night SmackDown, it was announced that MVP would be returning to the ring and he will be teaming with Bobby Lashley against Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods. It was scheduled to be Bobby Lashley versus Xavier Woods one-on-one, but now they changed it. Last Monday, Kingston accused MVP of milking his knee injury in his promo. MVP claimed he was not cleared, and then he was laid out by Kingston's trouble in paradise. MVP has been sidelined from in-ring action since February with a serious knee injury. His return to the ring is not a total surprise since WWE has been advertising his return for some upcoming live events with fans returning to venues across the United States. The match on Monday will serve to continue the build for Bobby Lashley versus Kofi Kingston at Money in the Bank for the WWE Championship. Great. Great. Yet you guys are all excited about Kofi Kingston challenging Bobby Lashley. Now we get these useless, irrelevant, waste of time tag team matches that nobody has a fucking interest in. I don't have an interest in seeing MVP in the ring. And I complained about this two weeks ago about Bobby Lashley. Why does he need to wrestle on a random episode of Monday Night Raw? You don't see Roman Reigns wrestling on SmackDown on a week-to-week basis or every other week basis. He wasn't even on the fucking show Friday. 
that's the type of position that Bobby Lashley should be in. And it also goes to show you how much more of a priority Roman Reigns is compared to Bobby Lashley. Where they're careless with Bobby Lashley, they are doing what they need to do with Roman Reigns. If they took that approach with most of their champions, everybody would feel like Roman Reigns. Important. The title would feel important. Bobby Lashley doesn't need to wrestle. He wrestled in a Hell in a Cell match. He wrestled at the pay-per-view. He's wrestling on this show. Before that, he was in six-man tags, tag team matches, leading into the previous pay-per-views that we just finished. I don't understand it. I really don't understand why Bobby Lashley needs to be exposed like that on a week-to-week, every-other-week basis. Keep him off the fucking show. Have him backstage. Do a fucking promo. That's the extent of it. Build and build and build without wrestling. It's a simple concept. It makes the title feel more important and it makes Bobby Lashley feel like a priority, which right now, I don't think he is. I really don't. I said it from day one. I don't think Bobby Lashley's the guy to anchor that show as the WWE champion. I don't. It's either going to Drew McIntyre or I pitched something last night on the SmackDown live stream where Big E is my odds on favorite to win money in the bank. Why don't we just give Big E the championship Have Bobby Lashley decimate Xavier Woods again. Have him run through Kofi Kingston in a very, very intense manner at Money in the Bank. Almost brutalize him to a point where Big E's going to be in the same building. He comes out. He tries to do something about it. He wins Money in the Bank. He don't even have the championship on his mind. He just has revenge on the mind. And you can fit in Big E right into the storyline and get the New Day back on Monday Night Raw as a threesome. As a three-piece. Because the Money in the Bank rules this year, if I am... If I'm correct, from what I heard, it's win the briefcase, win the contract challenge for any title in the WWE. So if Big E, SmackDown guy, wins the money in the bank, he could go over, set the rules this year, or per the rules this year, and challenge Bobby Lashley for the WWE Championship. That would get him away from Roman Reigns, and that would give him even a greater chance to win a first major singles world title in WWE. It's a very simple concept. But I don't think Bobby Lashley needs to be wrestling on a week-to-week basis. I don't. And I hope WWE does what they need to do as far as him steamrolling through two-thirds of the New Day with Big E getting his shine this year. Maybe with Kofi getting his shine at WrestleMania a couple years ago. Big E getting it this year, maybe. Maybe Xavier Woods is going to be in line for something in the next couple years. Because I think Xavier Woods, out of everybody, is the most underappreciated talent in all of the New Day. And I think out of all three guys in the New Day, I would rather see him get the push over everybody else. That's just my honest opinion. So we'll see what happens on Monday. WWE changed a one-on-one match between Woods and Lashley to a tag team match between Woods, Xavier, uh, or Xavier Woods, Kofi Kingston, Lashley, and MVP on Monday Night Raw. We'll see what happens. Speaking of Xavier Woods, why he missed Monday Night Raw. A lot of people were speculating that he's got other projects out there besides WWE. He was written off TV after the Hell in a Cell match with Bobby Lashley, and it all comes down to he just requested time off. Simple one. He just requested a week off. None of our business what he had planned. Maybe he just wanted a week off. Maybe it was personal things. Maybe he just wanted to sit home, recuperate, rest some nagging injuries, and play some video games. But the only thing is, a simple solution here for him to be off TV was he just asked for a week off and they gave it to him. So, really, nothing out there as far as, oh, why is he leaving? Is he hurt? Is he this or that? He just asked for a week off, and that was pretty much it. Somebody who's been off TV for several weeks and just returned on Monday night was Damian Priest. I got the latest on why he was off TV, and it was reported last week that Priest was off TV due to a back injury that had been bothering him since before WrestleMania 37. Now, PW Insider reports that Priest was away from TV while he dealt with some quote-unquote personal matters. WWE officials had hoped to have him back in time for Money in the Bank and him qualifying for Money in the Bank, but that did not happen. There is no word yet on what they have planned for him at Money in the Bank or if they have plans for him going into SummerSlam in August. Simple. I got the simple plans, and we talked about this on social media already with Damian Priest. Sheamus by SummerSlam should be healed of his broken nose that he suffered from Humberto Carrillo. Damian Priest clearly did not qualify to be in Money in the Bank, so he will not have a factor in the Money in the Bank outcome. So what Damian Priest needs to do is win matches. 
He needs to gain some momentum on Monday night. And WWE, the absolute most perfect match for Damian Priest at SummerSlam is to put him in a match with Sheamus and have him wrestle for the United States Championship and have him win the United States Championship from Sheamus. Sheamus hasn't done much of anything, but it really isn't his fault because Humberto broke his nose in a ridiculous match on Monday Night Raw that saw Sheamus lose to both Humberto and Ricochet in the same night. That's the match for Damian Priest. I would have liked for him to be, money, to be in Money in the Bank, but I don't think this is a lost cause. He's been off TV. WWE could have done a better job at pushing him on TV, doing vignettes, giving me a backstory as to who he is and why we should care. They didn't do any of that. I guess that type of stuff isn't important on the main roster. But the absolute most perfect thing for Damian Priest to do, if you want to really fix all this time that he's had off, put him in a United States title feud at SummerSlam, I think those two could give us a hell of a match at SummerSlam in Las Vegas with him winning the United States Championship. That's what needs to be done. WWE officials reportedly apologized to Zelina Vega. Now, if you guys watched SmackDown last night, Zelina Vega made her unfortunate return to the WWE. I ranted about this on the SmackDown live stream on the post show right here on OTS. I don't agree with her return. Now, we don't know her reasons. She could have a very viable reason as to why she came back. From the outsider's perspective looking in, it looks like she took the money and ran, and that's all she cares about. We don't know if she's financially stable. We don't know if she has a personal reason for wanting to go back to the WWE. I know she made a big deal about her father passing away, and she wanted to honor her father by finishing what she started in WWE. I remember when she wrestled Asuka for the Raw Women's Championship, she had made special ring gear in honor of her father. I don't know what the deal is, but from an outsider's perspective looking in, she certainly looks like a sellout. She even deleted her tweet on unionization in pro wrestling that garnered over 20,000 likes on Twitter. That tweet was deleted soon after she debuted, or returned, I should say, on SmackDown. Not really a good look for somebody that had the support of everybody in the community because she stood up for what she believed in. Now she looks like a shill. Now she looks like a sellout. And I think a lot of people in the community are looking at Selena Vega on SmackDown, not really having hope for much of anything. And everybody now has turned their back on her because she once stood for something she was very serious about. And now it comes off as if she doesn't give a shit at all. That's where I stood on the, on the whole situation. I know she has a lot to give, but she's not the best in-ring performer that WWE has in that division. She is no different than all the other women that WWE are not pushing right now on main roster television. She was definitely utilized to the best of her abilities when she managed Angel Garza and Austin Theory and Andrade, and she was paired with Andrade as a solo act when he was there, NXT champion, as he made his way to the main roster. They were a winning combo that they fucked up on. She definitely wants to wrestle. Don't know why she wanted to wrestle for WWE. She could have easily honored her father and wrestled in Impact. She could have went to MLW. She could have went to Ring of Honor. She could have went to AEW. Wrestled if she wanted to. Door would always be open there. And manage Andrade at the same time. Which I know he wanted her back in the company and said so personally. Now maybe she didn't want another managerial role. We don't know. But I do think, and a lot of people do think, that that role is suited best for her because that's where her strengths are as a manager, as a advocate for said client in Andrade, or it could be anybody. Now, Andrade has a surprise. Whether or not we see that surprise in Miami remains to be, ze remains to be seen. But we got another potential surprise, which Andrade could, you know, give us on AEW. Selena De La Renta, I believe her name is, from MLW. She was a part of, uh, of, of MLW. And everybody's now making the rumor out there to be that she could be coming in to be Zelina Vega's replacement for the act of Andrade. And I don't think that is a downgrade at all. In some fact, in some aspect, 
that could be an upgrade for Andrade. So we don't really know. But where I stand on the whole Zelina Vega issue is that she looks like a sellout. The deleted tweet looks like she sold out. She once cared about this one big thing that everybody got behind her on, and now she looks like a complete shill. She doesn't believe in herself. And if she doesn't believe in herself and took the easy money and took the easy way out, why would anybody believe in her at all? You'd think she would know what WWE does to women that they have no interest in pushing. She showed up on SmackDown and lost in one minute to Liv Morgan, a Liv Morgan who's barely been featured in four years on the main roster. She's only getting some shine right now because WWE has no other choice. There are no other women on the show. They don't want to push Liv Morgan, though they should. She's gotten a lot better over the years. She's actually trying. But WWE doesn't want to push Liv Morgan. If things were the way that they should, Liv Morgan wouldn't be a factor on WWE television. By default, they have to push her because they have no women on the SmackDown roster. But you would think Zelina Vega knows what WWE does. What is different, I asked? What is different this time around than compared to last time? She's always going to be a loser. And if SmackDown was any indication, she's already lost in one minute to Liv Morgan. Yeah, she's in Money in the Bank, but... I mean, you're making your return and you barely get in ring time. You want to be a professional wrestler. They only give you one minute to lose to Liv Morgan. I don't think that is getting off on the right foot. Everything about this just screams sellout to me. And that's where I stand on it. She doesn't believe in herself. Why should I? So WWE officials reportedly apologized to Zelina Vega. Like I said, she lost the match to Liv Morgan after being revealed as the latest competitor in the Money in the Bank women's ladder match. She commented on return after the entire show was over. She took to Twitter to issue this statement, and I quote, What's it take from tonight? I'm back. I'm going to be in the Money in the Bank ladder match. I will win. Period. Everything else is irrelevant. She will not win. Everything else is clearly irrelevant. Everything that you stood for is indeed irrelevant. All the support that the fans gave you to back you up, standing your ground on what you believed in, yes, is now irrelevant. So she is certainly correct. That seems to be like an inconspicuous shoot by WWE and Zelina Vega. There you go. She released, or she was released rather, by WWE last November for reasons related to WWE's third-party edict at the time. Sports Illustrated reported that this was due to her breaching her contract. So she got fired because she stood for what she believed in. She was not afraid. She was not afraid. Vince McMahon put out the edict that would ban WWE stars from using Twitch, Cameo, and OnlyFans under their ring names. PW Insider reports that the there were segments of the company who felt she should have been retained and not released. Those people pushed for conversations between the two sides, and that happened after Vega was released. The conversations eventually happened, and there was a long period of time where the two sides went back and forth to the point where WWE officials apologized to Vega for releasing her as well as offering her a deal to return. It was said that there are differing accounts as to when all that happened, as one source says it was in May, while another said it was much sooner than that, but all sides opted to keep it quiet so they could strategize a return. Fightful previously reported in May that Vega was spotted at the Performance Center and the two sides were working on a deal to have her return. So if it was much sooner, it would be more fucked up because on WWE's behalf, and she would actually look like a blithering idiot, if it was much sooner, she opted to come back to the company only to think, hey, Alistair, my husband is going to be on TV. He's going to get a big role, so let's negotiate a contract. I love to come back. If he's going to be on TV, I want to be in the company that my husband is working for. Now she signed while he was still there, and now she's back, and he's fired. So if it was a lot sooner than, or a lot more recent, I should say, than anything else, and this is exactly what happened, I mean, even if you want to go back a couple of months, Aleister Black was being featured on SmackDown with these Dark Father vignettes. Who's to say she wasn't negotiating while he was being repackaged and brought back to TV? She looked at it and said, you know what, my husband's on TV, he's going to be given a major role on SmackDown. They're going to debut him back. They got this Dark Father gimmick going on for him. I want to be back where he is, only for him to be fired. 
Now she looks like an idiot. Her husband is gone, more than likely headed to AEW. If he shows back up there, I would be floored. Somebody in that household has to realize what WWE is either A, trying to do here, or B, completely capable of when they didn't treat you the right way the first time. He needs to understand that if he goes back there, he will amount to nothing. Very rarely does WWE do the right thing. In this case, they'll just want you back to keep you away from AEW. Seems like to me they could definitely be in the position of playing Zelina Vega just to get her back so that she doesn't go anywhere else. Did WWE man up and say, hey man, we fucked up? No. They are never in a position where they will willingly admit that they fucked up. She took the money thinking that both of them were going to be on TV. And now look, he's off TV, fired, and she's back losing to Liv Morgan in one minute. None of this makes sense to me. None of it. None of it makes sense. The only way anybody from the outside looking in could interpret this is Zelina's a sellout and WWE fucked not only her husband up, but fucked her over as well. I pray to God Alistair goes to AEW and gets treated the way he always should have been treated. Don't go back there because your wife is now given a new contract and a new lease on life. Don't go there because of that. Go make your money somewhere else. Somebody in that household has to have some fucking brains to do what is right. And fuck WWE if they're using Vega now, bringing her back now as Alistair is inching closer to that 90-day contract clause being up. Fuck them if they're using her as leverage to get him back in the company. Because it's only going to be the same thing, just reversed. If he's back, he ain't going nowhere. She's back. She ain't going nowhere. WWE may end up making them the new Miro and new Lana. Zelina Vega, I'd be surprised if she's not through nine tables by the time Aleister Black is back. Anyway, guys, thank you so very much for all your support. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up down below. Turn on the bell for all notifications. Hit that subscribe button if you have not done so already. Follow me on Twitter at JD from NY206. That's Twitter and Instagram. Hit that subscribe button down below. And like I said, I will see you guys at some point this weekend with another extra no full-fledged podcast. This weekend, we'll be back at it on Monday. Full strength, new week. So make sure you guys keep an eye and an ear out for all the content coming this weekend, this 4th of July weekend. If you missed anything on the channel, also go and check it out. It's on the homepage right now. And I will see you right back here for Off The Script this weekend with some extras, guys. Don't go anywhere. I got more coming up, and I'll see you all in a little bit.